All right, we are recording. Welcome everyone, happy Tuesday. Okay guys, we are in for such a treat. I have um, been so excited to share this training with the team. As so many of you know, I've been so excited about this. We have Diamond Ambassador Rhonda Shaw on for our training tonight. And I just love this woman. We met at convention at the Black Tie Gala. And she is just the sweetest, most amazing mom of five kiddos. She's a homeschooling mom, and she never intended to do this business, you guys. She started off as a wholesale ambassador, and this company has truly changed their lives. They have hit the road at various times and traveled all over the U.S., and it has been quite the venture. Um, and so, and then we also, Rachel and I got the privilege of um, having her train us at convention for our Emerald training. And so then I got to see a whole different side of her. She is such a strong and powerful businesswoman. She has the mixture of both sweet and yet, you know, that whole red personality, strong businesswoman side. So anyway. Without further ado, let's welcome Rhonda. Rhonda, um, share just your story with us and whatever tips you have. We are so ready and excited to learn. Oh, well, that was such a warm welcome. Thank you for that introduction, Autumn. You're precious. I'm so glad that, um, that we met and um, congratulations on being a jewel with Plexus because that is quite the accomplishment. So you guys are under some amazing leadership. Um, to have your leader have reached a dual level and all the the things that come that come with that because so many doors are open to you once you're a dual with the company so much um, amazing training and just communication from corporate that she gets to share with you guys you know I kind of feel like sometimes as you move up the ranks without that dual upline really kind of helping you and nurturing you that sometimes you feel like you're on an island so when you have a strong dual upline and someone that's helping you consider yourself so blessed so there are no there are no reasons that you shouldn't be there too um, with that kind of support and that kind of nurturing and care and um, I feel like I was raised um, by all the jewels in this company on YouTube. So if you ever feel like you need a mentor, those were my mentors. And they weren't my mentors in real life. They were my mentors in video, just like this. Like this video will be shared at some point and there will be a new ambassador out there, maybe right now or maybe in a year from now, searching YouTube and they're gonna run across this video and get some amazing tips and amazing training. And that's exactly what I did when I started with Plexus. I, like Autumn said, it was an accidental business for me. I was um, a very busy mom with five kids, but I was also really sick. I have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and was not doing well. And my youngest child at the time, he was, I think he was about a little over one and a half when I um, ordered Plexus products and he had been diagnosed with diabetes August 23rd um, of that past year, his like not long after his first birthday. So he was 13 months old when he was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And um, he was our, our last child, our fifth child. And it just rocked my world. I don't know if there's any more um, type one moms on here, but just know that I'm praying for you, that I know what a challenge that that can be, but I don't want it to discourage you from moving forward in this business. I've grown my business um, from a uh, hospital many times over with his hospitalizations and all that I've had to do. I just really believe that God gives you grace for what he's called you to. So if you're feeling that calling on your life, which is what happened to me when I started taking Plexus and Pretty rapidly, it started changing my life. It started changing my health and how I was feeling. And it started giving me the ability to dream again, to dream that there might be potential or possibility with this company or something that could actually maybe be a benefit for my family if I didn't have to stop homeschooling my kids and if I didn't have to leave the house and I could be available for them. I just started to see many, many opportunities before me. And I finally had some health. Um, that an energy that I hadn't had before 
that was fueling those dreams and those passions again for me. And so, um, which by the way, excuse me, this is called mom life. <laughs> um, I actually have a sick kid today. So I've kind of been just like doing all that I can to um, keep up with a sick kid and help my other kids today. So um, this is the best I got for you today. Um, but I really saw the possibilities with Plexus. I saw their compensation plan. Like I said, I started watching diamond documentaries on YouTube and I was like, wow, look at these women. Like they're moms just like me. Um, they're dads just like my husband. And these, these look like real life people. Have you ever watched something um, from maybe a successful person and it was just like super kind of I don't know, manufactured, just felt not authentic and kind of salesy and maybe a little bit scammy. And you're like, they're pitching you like their million dollar life and their big yacht and their house. And you're kind of like, well, I don't know about that. Right. Well, Plexus wasn't any of those things. Those diamond documentaries were real people with, with real stories that I could connect with and relate with. And I started sharing those diamond documentaries with my friends and saying, look at these, look at these people. Like they're just like us. You know, what if we did this? What if you and, what if you and I went to Maui together? What if we earned a Lexus? Like how cool would that be? Of course, my skeptical husband, he is, he is the grounded down to earth guy, right? I'm the dreamer and he's the like realist. He is um, an insurance agent, a financial planner. He's Dave Ramsey all the way. He had me carrying, um, you know, cash envelopes and everything. And, um, and I'm just like, Hey, let's take a vacation. Like right now, you know, <laughs> no planning or anything. And he's like, wait, 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 how does that fit in our budget? And he just asks all the not fun questions. Right. And he just ruins everything for me. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm still dreaming. And you're bringing me down to reality. And so that's how he felt about Plexus. Like, I just don't believe this. I don't believe that this opportunity is real. I, I know that you're capable. I just don't believe that they'll reward you for the hard worker that you are, for the effort that you put forth. And so we kind of made a deal, like a handshake deal, where if I made this amount of money in a certain amount of time that we laid out together, that he would consider this business legitimate. Well, that's all a red needs. A red personality, she only needs a goal and a challenge. She needs someone to tell her she can't do it. And one of those other people, believe it or not, um, three months after I started Plexus, I convinced my husband to let me spend money to go to convention. Now I had to, I had to stay at a friend's house. Well, it actually wasn't even my house, my friend's house. It was my friend's sister's house. And we stayed there and we drove back and forth to a convention center every day. I ate super cheap meals. I did whatever I could to get there. No excuses, right? I was dying to see what this company was all about because these products were radically changing my life. And I wanted to see what the corporate executives were like. I wanted to see what the jewels were like up close and personal. I had to be there. Well, so I was so inspired. It had to be day two or day three of convention. I was just on fire. I had drawn my line in the sand from sitting in that convention seat and hearing those testimonies and talking to all the people that I met. I asked every single person I met, what's your story? I'd love to hear it. And just life-changing testimony after life-changing testimony, I was just blown away. So I'm traveling back to um, the parking garage and we're riding up the escalator. And behind me on the escalator is Tarl Robinson. And I turned around and I introduced myself and I said, hi, I'm Rhonda Shaw, I'd like to meet you. And he was like, hi, I'm Tarl, nice to meet you. And I said, I've been so inspired by this convention. And he said, oh really? And I said, yes. I was like, I will be on that stage next year. And he goes, we'll see about that. Just kind of like in that challenging way, like just enough that I needed that I was like, did he just seriously challenge me? Did he just say, we'll see if you're going to be on stage? I was like, oh, well, it's on now between you and my husband. I have a big goal to meet. And I remember telling my upline, I want to say it was like December of that, of that year or whatever. And I was working hard for senior gold and she's like, girl, you are just nonstop. And I said, I have to be on that stage. Well, to get on the stage at that point, you had to be a senior Ruby. Of course, we've grown so much now, it's not the same. But at that point, you had to be a senior Ruby to get on convention, to get to the convention stage. And you can bet that I was a senior Ruby by next year's convention because I was going to stand on that stage. And the next year at convention, I walked past Tarl 
And I, um, I uh, said, okay, well, I did it. Challenge completed. And he started laughing. And I said, last year, when I was a silver ambassador coming to my first convention, and I told you I was going to be on stage, you said, we'll see. And he said, so now? I was like, so now I'm on stage. And he congratulated me. And it was just a really fun moment um, for me to prove people wrong, right? To instead of letting that discourage you when people around you are saying you're just a dreamer or you can't do this or that's um, just a scam or that's not going to happen, that's not real, for you to dig deep and use that as a challenge, use that as fuel to your dream, to your fire. You know, um, I love that quote that says, light yourself on fire and people will come from miles to watch you burn. And that's always been a favorite quote of mine because I believe that in my spiritual life. Um, I believe that in my home life with my kids and my family. And I believe that in my business life. I believe that if you want to attract people to your family, attract people to your faith, attract people to your way of life or your children even to a greater lifestyle, you have to light your own fire. You cannot wait around for someone to come around and motivate you. You cannot wait for someone to walk past and drop a match on you and light the fire. That comes from within. That motivation and that drive to do this business comes after you take an action. So I took the action of joining Plexus. I then took the action of researching the company and taking the products as directed and learning all that I could about them. And through those courses of action, that fuel began to burn, that spark was lit. And I continued to fuel my fire with the ones that had gone before me. So I sought out all the successful people that I could find in Plexus. Did I private message them? Heck no, I knew that they were busy and probably had very full inboxes. But here's how I watched their Facebook pages. I watched their videos. I watched their, um, we didn't have Zoom trainings at that time, but I watched every video that, that was ever posted. Um, I listened to calls. Maybe none of you have ever listened to a call before, but when I started Plexus three years ago, there were Wednesday night calls and there were calls that um, had been already recorded a long time ago. And I would just be driving down the road and I would be turning Turning on a call, it was plexus, plexus, plexus in every spare moment of my day. Because if you think that a busy homeschooling mama five has a lot of time in your day, you are sorely mistaken. I have very little time in my day. I am going from sunup to sundown, and then after sundown, I'm up checking blood sugars all night to make sure that my son is safe. And so, wherever I could fit in those nooks and crannies, and I knew that if I gave my all effort in all those nooks and crannies, and if I was wise with my time and I cut out all, all the fluff, like TV and, and activities that my kids weren't really even interested in or maybe even old enough to be participating in, but we used them as time fillers. Maybe you guys have that. Maybe your you know, little three-year-old is in a gymnastics class and that's really fun for them, but it's keeping you super busy and that time could be better spent building a business for your child's future. That was the kind of vision I had. So I told my kids, you know what, look guys, we're going to take a season and mom's going to really work hard on her business. And so all the extra stuff that's unnecessary, that's fun um, to you guys and fun for us as a family, we're going to come back to that. We are going to do that and we are going to sign you up for all the things you love and all the things you want to be involved in. But for a season, our family is going to set those things aside and we are going to do um, what's absolutely necessary every single single day um, for your, you know, schooling and for your spiritual growth and all of that. But everything else is fluff. And we're cutting out all the fluff so that mom can work on her business for this season. And what we saw was that season from silver to emerald. Now, guys, if that season for you is going to look like five to 10 years, well, then obviously you can't do that tunnel vision that we did. But I set a short goal for myself, a very short goal. And it actually took me 15 months to go emerald. Um, my kids were involved in several activities for that time. But when they, when it ran out, when that time ran out for different seasons of things that they completed, we did not re-enlist. Okay. <laughs> That's what I want you to, want you to know. We didn't re-enlist and we took that season as a family and it looked a lot like, sorry guys, mom's working right now. Sorry guys, mom can't do, you know, mom can't do that. And 
the, it was kind of a, for my kids, it was kind of a, a weird time for them. They were never without parents, um, me or my husband. One of us was always in charge and taking over of them. But explaining to them and showing them what hard work and entrepreneurship looks like was a life lesson that they will never forget. Um, we told them that if mom hit Emerald and um, got the Maui trip by July 31st, that we would all be going to Maui together. And we did, and it was a fantastic trip. And I went Emerald on July 31st at like 10.55 p.m. <laughs> right before the cutoff. Um, those last th five orders were placed. And um, I hit it with like, um, I think I went Emerald with 1,511 points. So you want to talk about by like the, you know, the very minimum, um, I went Emerald. But my kids then looked back on that season, you know, kind of when it was over and everybody caught their breath and we went to Hawaii and it was just so relaxing as a family. Um, my older kids who were old enough to verbalize this just said, you know what, mom, I'm so grateful we did that. It was hard and it was a sacrifice, but we see what you and dad say now about sacrifice. So now here we are three years later and I just took my daughter today to um, tour a school. She wants to go to the Paul Mitchell Salon um, school, school salon uh, when she graduates next year. She's a senior, so she'll be my first child to graduate Shaw's school, cool school is what we call it, and um, go on to be a cosmetologist, which is what she really wants to do. And we were sitting there and the lady was saying, you know, um, we're going to teach you a lot about business. We're going to teach you a lot about hard work. We're going to teach you a lot about um, crunching numbers because a, a bunch of your um, business is going to be based on your sales of products and different things. And you're going to hear a lot of no's. You're going to hear a lot of no's. And you're going to have to learn not to take that personally and to let it fuel your fire. And, you know, she's just going through all these things. And she was like, and this career will be what you make it. We're going to give you the tools, but we can't make you successful. That's going to all be dependent upon you. And the sky is the limit. You can just graduate by the skin of your teeth and maybe get a job somewhere, or you can really apply yourself while you're here and have a fantastic job doing, you know, print ads in New York City or, um, you know, working on Dancing with the Stars. Like the, the sky is the limit for you. It's how you apply yourself. And my daughter and I left there and she's like, wow, mom. How did I, you know, didn't even realize that you working Plexus was going to prepare me for my future in this way. And she was like, but I just had to chuckle at all that the lady was saying. She was like, because that's all I've heard from my mom for the last three years about life. And I really believe that there's so many life lessons for your family to learn, for your kids to learn, and that this can be something that really strengthens your family if you allow it to. If you allow it to be a family effort and you don't know, and you don't turn it into something where it's just about you or it's just about money because it's focusing on others and building up others where you're going to find your reward, where you're going to find your success, where you're going to look and you're going to look at all the lives you've touched and all the people that you help. And that's going to be your greatest reward. You're going to be sitting in Maui and it's going to be wonderful, but your thoughts are going to be on the people that are with you or the people that aren't with you that you want to be there the next year, that your dreams are about how can they be there? How can they experience this? How can you help their families, you know, achieve financial freedom like that? And for me and my husband, it's been an incredible blessing and worth all the hard work. But you have to draw your line in the sand. You have to let the negativity be your fuel for your fire. You have to light your own self on fire if you're going to be successful in this business. And you have to follow the people that have that have already paved the path before you, that have laid out the roadmap for you to walk. We can't make you take those steps, but we've laid out the roadmap for you, quite literally in the Rank Up Roadmap, for you to go from step to step to step to where you need to go in this business. And I am so grateful that the Lord would put this business in my lap and that he would show me and open a door that I had closed and said was never happening. And I was never getting back into network marketing and never doing a job like that again. And I'm so happy that I put aside those thoughts and that negativity and that I went for it. And so you guys have an opportunity here. We have, what is it? It's the 22nd and this is what? 31 days. Yes. Of this month, there's 31 days. And so look at that time we have left of this month. Look at where you are right now. Ask yourself, what is holding me back from being silver? 
what is holding me back from going silver again, right? If you've gone silver once to be successful, you have to do it again and again and again and again and again, and you help others to do the same. So you're sitting here with this many days left and you have a choice to make. Maybe you've let the, this month be a great distraction for you, as I know it can be. Our kids are going back to school, um, activities are ending and new activities are beginning. It's so, August is such a difficult month. Like I get that. I am in the trenches with you. I um, have my hair in a bun and my head in a ball cap. Like I get it, right? But we have um, in network marketing, the pace that you go, going faster is easier. Going slow is hard. And so I always tell people, you've got to pick a side, you've got to pick a time. I really love to do the 30 day push. I'm all about that. I always feel like if someone wants to jump start their business, if you're dissatisfied with where you are, you pick a time you set aside and you do a 30 day push. Um, I think I have two videos on the subject on YouTube. One's called a 30 day push and the other one is called, um, success loves speed. So I won't go into the details of that, but you can watch those and, um, see what I talk about in there, but take these last days left sit down write it down have a powwow with your family have a powwow with your significant other and say look I have been on like autopilot I have been saying that I want this business but I haven't really given it the time that it deserves I haven't really given it the respect that it deserves or treated it like a business and so I'm not reaching my goals so here I have this many days left in this month to get that silver bonus which is amazing, and that is gonna benefit our family how, right? Because you gotta have your family involved. I loved it, um, me and my kids, we had parties for every rank, and we had different prizes for every rank that I achieved because that was their reward for helping me and doing the hard work and doing the sacrifices was that we had a prize set for every rank and did that as a family, and each one looked different. Um, my girls loved the Senior Ruby one. Um, that was a really, really fun one with them. For them, we surprised them with a concert, and they had no idea, and it was just, it was such an exciting thing to do for them and to reward them for all the help that they've given me so set that goal get your family together say this is how much time I have to go silver and you finally make it a goal you stop wishing for it you stop just wanting it and you go get it three people guys three people to go silver all of us know three people all of us know three people that are struggling with their health that are struggling with their finances or that are looking for somewhere to belong how many of you love to belong to the plexus culture i love to belong here i mean i have made some of the best friends of my whole life in plexus i can't imagine doing life without these people I just can't. And so some people, they're just lost and they're looking for a place to belong and a place to feel somewhere where they're loved and nurtured and appreciated. And that one plexus culture, I can't think of a better place to bring them to, to help love on them and to nurture them. We all know three people. So I challenge you in these next days before the 31st to go silver. I know that Autumn has given you the tools. Yes, Autumn, to go silver. Oh yeah, I know she's probably laid out a roadmap already and she's probably done silver and seven challenges. And I mean, I know she has done it all. So we have no excuses anymore, right? All those tools are there. It is a mental decision. You turn on and off the switch, whether you realize it or not. Because every person I've ever messaged that has gone, that has done something extraordinary or reached a goal in a short period of time or become a jewel, I love to ask them, I love to say, what was it? And all of them were like, I just decided to do it. In some way, that's what they say. It may look a little different or it may be a longer story, but in the end, it was just they decided to do it. They decided to stop believing the lies. They decided to stop believing the negativity. They decided to write it down, to set a goal, to make it happen, um, to do it, to stop believing that they couldn't. And guys, it happened. It happened happened and I know it can happen for you so don't let any discouragement that you've had up until this point of this month with busyness pass you by without doing this without going for it you have so much time left in front of you this month Rhonda I wanted to ask if you could share a little bit more about how your life has changed with being in Plexus and um, 
what this opportunity has maybe allowed your family that you wouldn't have had maybe those opportunities before Plexus? Well, I think the biggest thing um, really that has changed is just um, because we're still the same people. I always feel like, you know, money just amplifies who you already are, right? And so um, for us, we, not much has changed in the way that we still are a Dave Ramsey family. (laughs) We still, um, you know, live frugally, although um, I have a bigger um, envelope for fun money than I used to have. That was a big deal for me. I wanted to have like, um, like my daughter's 15th birthday is happening this weekend. And I like to um, take certain times for the kids or something that's important to them and maybe spend extra that I normally wouldn't ever spend, you know, just um, because that blesses them. And that's a reward and exciting for them. We got to um, purchase an RV and travel around the country, which had always been a dream of mine as a homeschooling mom. I wanted to get my kids out on the road and show them real life um, school. And we uh, we were just talking about it the other day, how we were in um, Nashville last year and we were at the Carton Plantation. And if you've never been there, oh, you've got to go. It's in Franklin, Tennessee. And so much of the Civil War battles happened like in that area and a huge, huge battle happened there. And so just hearing the stories and making that time of life um, come to life for my children, even my littlest, who's five, he was four last year when he went there and he still remembers and can recall details. So that's really exciting to me because that's the kind of, you know, school I want my kids to have and I wanted them to experience. And my husband had always said it was not a possibility. It could never happen. And I was just the dreamer, right? And said, I just know some way it can. And so through our Plexus income, that afforded my husband more freedom for us to hire more employees to work at his office. Um, He's a state farm agent and to give him the ability to take extended periods of time off away from the office and work from the road and things like that so we could travel. Um, It's allowed us to um, purchase my daughter a a car when she turned 16, um, to pay, you know, continue to pay cash for things like we always have. And um, it's allowed us to move closer to my family. That was a huge blessing and something I prayed would happen. Um, We just three months ago moved back near family and that's been an awesome blessing and just a great opportunity for our kids. Um, we've been able to allow them to do more things that maybe before we couldn't do. For my son, it allows us to give him the very best care with his diabetes. We don't have to stress about where the money's going to come from to give him the proper care that he needs. He's uh, required major surgery this year. And um, when it comes to medical expenses, we are paying at a very, very top top price because of his medical needs every month. And um, we didn't have to stress. We just were like, what does he need? Okay, let's do it. And we didn't have to figure out how we were going to pay that medical bill over the next six months or, you know, those kind of things, guys, when you just lay your head, which is why me, me and my husband are such big Dave Ramsey people, is because financial peace cannot be underestimated. I did not do this business so that I could um, just go spend more money. I did this business so that we could change our financial future, so that we could escalate the things that we want to do financially and make them happen faster. Um, Because when you lay your head on your pillow at night and you know that your bills are paid, and that you're not over your head in credit card debt, which some of you may be, because I know the statistics, and I'm telling you guys, there is a way out. If you've never researched Dave Ramsey's plan, please do it. It's it's like a hundred dollars to get the finance to participate in the financial peace class and it will change your life in so many ways. I can't even explain my husband and I do this class for my Plexus team because that's how important it is to us. And that's one of the ways that, um, that I love to give back to my team is to give them those kind of resources because I believe that you can make a lot of money with Plexus, but if you still don't have control over your finances, it's not going to be a blessing for you. It's just going to go into that same you know, funnel that it always has. Of we're always playing catch up. But if you guys can can get really fiscally tight and responsible, even at the silver level, even taking that extra five hundred dollars a month and doing the debt snowball, by the time you're Ruby, all that money could be excess. All that money could be going into your savings. You could, you guys could have three to six months of emergency savings 
put aside. Could you imagine the, the peace that comes with that? It's a huge, tremendous peace. And so my husband and I have been able to escalate a lot of our financial goals. Um, that has been a blessing for our kids' education, for health, for um, our home, for all of those things. It's, it's been a tremendous blessing, but we're still the same Shaw's. Um, oh, one of the perks, one of the biggest ones um, that has been a blessing for me um, the, the last two years since I've been a diamond is paying someone to come in and help me teach the kids because I've got five and I've got two in high school and I have a child with special needs that is very demanding on my time during the day. And I was finding it a struggle balancing work and homeschool and all that. And I did it. I did it for all that time up to diamond. I made it work. I juggled all those balls and everybody got educated. Um, but it was such a blessing um, for us to be able to hire someone and have that helper with me every day. She's my buddy and she helps me, you know, make things run and make sure everybody gets um, all their schoolwork done and, and keeps it fun and interactive while I do Zoom calls or you know uh, John Maxwell groups or whatever it is that I'm doing um, for the day that needs to be done. And yet I still get to be there and homeschool my kids. So um, that's been a huge blessing. Um, Rhonda, you signed Bridget Ryan, mm -hmm. and I don't think very many people are familiar with um, the story behind that and how you went because you didn't know her. Right? Or did you, ex why don't you explain that story to us? Um, and maybe for those that don't know who Bridget is, um, you know, help them think outside the box here for a minute. You know, she was okay, a blogger, yeah. and, you know, there's other opportunities outside of just our warm market, our family and friends. Oh, absolutely. And of course, you know, I met Bridget on um, her blog, I started following her blog. Um, gosh, it would be almost 10 years ago now um, that I started following her blog. She had a blog that was called Blogging Bridget, and that was when they were traveling the United States in an RV, and she had five kids, at, four kids at the time, four or five. I was trying to remember who was the youngest. I think that, I think that, no, I think she had, uh, oh, I can't remember. It was probably four. I think she had four. Um, at she the has time, seven you know. now. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. yeah so they, oh, she had five. She did. She had five when she was traveling. So um, she had five kids and they were traveling the United States. And so I was watching, like, I was watching this journey. You know, she would blog about different places they had visited. And of course I would comment because I followed a lot of blogs. Like she wasn't the only blog I followed and the only person I talked to. Um, but there are some bloggers that I followed that I'd be like, we would totally be real life friends. Like if we knew each other, you know, in real life or in the same town, we would be real life friends. And I would tell Scott that all the time. And he'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, Oh, I'm reading Bridget's blog. And he's like, is that that lady that's traveling the United States? And I'm like, yes, I seriously, she would be like my best friend. If we knew each other in real life, she'd be like my best friend. And, um, he would always laugh about that. Oh, we lost you. Hold on, guys. Hopefully we'll get her back. Are you there? She might need to log back on. Hang tight, everyone. Gotta love technology. Rhonda. Hold on, she's getting, now she just logged off. She's probably getting right back on. <clears throat> I'm excited to hear the rest of this story. <laughs> she better get back on. All right. Well, while she, while we're waiting for her, oh yeah, there we go. While we're waiting for her guys, um, hopefully we'll get her back, but I want you to be thinking about, we're going to see if she has a couple minutes for questions at the end. Um, I'm wondering if maybe her computer died or something like that. 
and she'll find another way to get back on. But um, be thinking about questions you want to ask her. She is, she's, oh, hold on. No, that's not her. Well, darn it. Um, be thinking about any questions you want to ask her. I hope, hopefully, she'll be back on with us. Um, but in regards to really anything. Well, I'll give it another couple minutes. Autumn, are you there? Oh, yes. We okay. Oh, sorry. What happened? It was like the Wi-Fi eclipse or something. It um, was. You like froze and then you were gone. So I know. It was just like a Wi-Fi eclipse. Seriously. What did it last? Did it last like two minutes and 10 seconds? Just like the real eclipse? Um, yeah. That was crazy. So, um, so I was just talking about that relationship with Bridges. So it developed over time. Um, eventually we were Facebook friends when everybody was getting on Facebook and connecting and stuff like that. And um, she just followed my plexus journey. Um, you know, she came to my house once. Um, I want to say I had just gone gold, um, was a gold ambassador, and she was traveling with her friend Rossi, who's also on our team now, and um, hopefully will be an emerald soon. And she was, um, we talked a little bit about Plexus, but we mostly just talked about life. We were so excited to finally see each other in person um, since we'd been friends for so long over the internet. It was like, are you really here in real life? Um, Bridget did not join me until um, I was senior Ruby. Um, or I went, yeah, like right before I had gone senior Ruby, I was almost senior Ruby um, when she joined me. And um, she just took off like a rocket ship. But I want to say this about prospecting and about recruiting and all of that. One, I believe that so many people's warm markets are still virtually untapped. And it's because we're afraid. We're afraid of losing relationships or friendships. But guys, when it's really done with a pure heart, which, you know, that's how I feel is like, if I had something that could really help someone, why would I be so scared to share that with them? You know, the worst thing they can say is no, thank you. It's not for me. Right. And the people who come back with like really nasty things about MLMs or whatever, is I always say this hurting people hurt others. So maybe they were burned in the past, or maybe they're actually just really hurting physically. I tell a lot of people that if someone had come to me, approached me with plexus about how it could cure my fibromyalgia, or I've got just the thing for you, like I know you have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, and you know plexus is going to be the answer for you, I would have said no. And the reason why I would have said no is because I had been trying for over 15 years to find something to help me. I did everything organically. I've done GAPS diets. I've always done gut health. I've always um, done crazy things, stuff you guys would not believe. Um, acupuncture, chiropractors, massage therapists, naturopaths, vitamin IVs, hyperbaric chambers, um, you know, shots weekly, all sorts of special supplements. My cabinets were full of supplements, full, busting, every cabinet, my bathroom cabinet, my kitchen cabinets, my laundry room cabinets. I actually did a post, it's so not compliant, and you'll probably never find it because I think I deleted it off Facebook. But when we moved out of our house, I took pictures of the two black 33-gallon trash bags of supplements that I threw away when we moved because I didn't need all of those anymore. 233 gallon because that was stuff I had tried and abandoned. That was stuff I still occasionally took. That was stuff, lots of stuff I had tried and was just like, oh my gosh, anything I could do to get well. And so I feel like you're not always reaching out into your warm market. And then I like to also tell people that the people that you sponsor onto your team, don't let them go untapped. Now they may not want this business, but they know a lot of people and those people may want this business. And so you wanna help those people, you wanna to get to know the people that they know.
you know, you, you want to be able to say, look, I know you're not interested in the business and that is so okay. Like, I'm just so happy you're finally on the products. I want it to be life changing for you. I know these will be awesome for you, but I know that there's probably some people, you know, that could use this business or these products. And I'd love to just brainstorm with you because it's totally okay with me if you don't feel comfortable reaching out to them or you don't want to share with them. Um, but I would love the opportunity to share with them and let them help you make those connections. And a lot of times it plants a seed where they're like, oh my gosh, well, why, why am I not talking to that person? I need to be talking to that person. You want to be continually building your Facebook page, you know, your Facebook friends list. I had 257 friends when I joined Plexus. I mean, you just want to continually build that. You want to look for friends of friends, right? I, I would go through my friends list, my friends from high school, and I would be like, who are they friends with that I know that I didn't friend yet, you know, and things like that and start building connections. Um, join Facebook groups, not all of them and not tons of them. Like really seek out your interests. People are going to follow you because you're authentic. And so going into groups like Instapot and you don't even own one, like that's not, that's not authenticity, right? But, you know, me being part of a diabetes mom's group, like that's authentic. My child has diabetes. I have real things to contribute to that page and they have real things to contribute. And those are people that I would actually have conversations with, right? That builds community. That builds um, trust between people. That builds relationships. And I don't go into Facebook groups with the idea that I'm going to prospect the people in that group. I go continually looking to build relationships because I want to have friends. Whether they join me in Plexus or they don't, I want to build relationships with people. And if you're a relationship builder, and what I love to say is a connector, you want to know one of the things that so why Celeste is so successful and why she was so successful so quickly is she's a connector. So she's a person that says, oh, I see you, Rhonda Shaw, and I see that you're a mom that has, you know, a kid with diabetes. I know so-and-so. Her kid has diabetes. I bet you guys would be really good friends. You want me to hook you up with her? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that would be great, right? When you're that kind of person, when you're that kind of person that's looking to how you can help others and how you can connect people and get them, people then think of you that way. They think of you as the connector. They think of you as a person, as a resource, someone that's helpful and someone that will help them. So you've got to be about helping people. <laughs> so I'm not going to give you some big, long, like, um, I love Bob Heilig, but I'm not going to give you some big, long Bob Heilig strategy, right? You've got to be authentic about people. And he will say that as well. And now, yes, there is some strategy to prospecting and I read all those books and I listen to all those things. And I'm mindful of that when I'm building relationships, but the intention is always to have a relationship with someone. Wow, this has been awesome. Um, do you have time if we just grab maybe like three questions, if somebody sure. has any questions? And you know, I'd encourage you, even if you're brand new and you just have a very common basic question, or maybe you've been here for a while, you're a seasoned ambassador. Um, let's see who's- I wanna, I wanna hold Galena's baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm a baby snatcher. Watch out. Oh, <laughs> I was a, a NICU nurse, did nursery postpartum, NICU, labor and delivery, uh, pediatrics and all of that. And so I can't see a baby without like literally wanting to just take them. <laughs> I love that. All right. Anybody have a question? You can even type it in the I chat. do. Oh, good. Great. Oh, there you go. Um, I actually have a friend that I've been friends with since we're like seven years old. Anyway, I went up to had a visit with her and I've been trying to get her on these supplements because she's been sick and chronic fatigue and the doctors don't know what's wrong. They've diagnosed her with cancer. That wasn't it. And all these other things. Well, when I went up there and talked to her about Plexus, she just looks at me and she's like, that's not a real job. This stuff isn't real. You're wasting your time. Get a real job. And I just kind of looked at her and I'm like, Oh, okay. And yeah. Autumn knows that kind of put me in a funk for the last month and a half. It like, it messed with me mentally. How do you get over stuff like that? 
Yeah, that's hard because it's someone you're close to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I've got to tell you, sometimes the closest people to you will not be your biggest supporters. You know, like I said, my husband in the beginning, he was a skeptic mm -hmm. and he wasn't my biggest supporter. You know, he loves me and was encouraging me, but he felt a lot like your friend. Like, that's yeah. not a legit thing. That's not a real thing. You know, when I was trying to work and stuff, sometimes he'd get frustrated that I was spending so much time on Plexus because he felt like it was going to be a fruitless endeavor. And then I was wasting a lot of our family time doing something. Now, of course, that changed when I showed him, the, you know, when he, the checks started coming and I was making money. But there was that time period where he didn't really believe. And I was really just kind of on my own, right, with my own little belief. Like, yeah. whether you think this is good or not, I'm doing this, you know. And my brother, he does, his family doesn't support me in this at all. And I'm a diamond in the company. And he even knows... Yeah. Well, one, he thought <laughs> last summer when we were all together, like at a baseball game or something, he leaned forward to my husband and he said, so what does she make? Like a couple thousand a month or, you know, whatever. And of course my husband just busted out laughing because we're like, that's what you think? Like all this time we've been yeah. like trying to tell you about this opportunity and this business. And like, he honestly thought like that I just made hardly nothing, you know, doing this business. And I'm like, I turned to him and I said, do you think that I would sacrifice family time and all that I do and travel all over the country if they paid me $2,000 a month? Like, no, I'd rather go back to my nursing job or something. <laughs> and um, so sometimes the people that you really care about will not be your biggest supporter. And even after they know how much money I make, they still don't purchase from me. They don't, you know, get products from me or anything. And I just have to be okay with that. You know, it's not for mm -hmm. everyone. And so don't let your friend be the decider of your dreams. Because when you let her opinion decide your dreams, you've given her the power and control over your life. Does your friend really know what's best for you? Or do you think that you and your family know what's best for you? Yeah, that's true. Me and my family know what's best. Yes. And so those opinions should carry greater weight than anything the outside world has to say. Right? You're right. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Heather Clark said, that's right. They don't pay your bills. <laughs> right. They don't. <laughs> and when they do, when they start paying your bills, their opinion can count. Yes. And I know you love her and you can still just love her. I mean, you just love her and you just keep doing your thing and you tell her that I'm sorry you feel that way. I would really love to help you, but, but here's what I want you to know. I will always be here for you. And if you ever decide that you want to be a part of what I'm doing, I will totally forget we had this conversation and I will sign you up. You know, yeah. but I love what I'm doing and I love the people I'm a part of and you continue to post proudly about your life and the way it's changing your life and the community that you're a part of and she's going to see that and it's not like you're posting to like to prove her wrong or to make her upset. You're just continuing to live authentically and um, I, I always feel like it's kind of like how the Bible says that they'll be won over by your testimony. They'll be won over mm -hmm. just by the meekness and quietness in your spirit, just who you are. And I think that that's true of Plexus too, that the naysayers mm -hmm. are just kind of won over, not by you gloating it around in their face, what you have or what you do, but just about who you are and how it's been a blessing to you. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Quickly, anyone else with a question? Don't be shy. Okay, I have a question. Yay. Okay, um, so I am probably not the only one that feels this way, but cold messaging is just definitely my biggest challenge. Yeah. And I just feel like lately I have been hearing seriously nothing but crickets. And it's like you, you kind of get into a conversation and just like you said, you try to build that relationship and then all of a sudden you, you bring it up and you bring it up as authentically as possible and then boom, they don't reply. And so I've tried a, different, a couple different approaches and I was just curious if you have found something along your journey and your experience as far as cold messaging that has just really kind of stuck with you and really worked as far as keeping people in the conversation to where they can like 
come to you and not know or not feel like you're trying to sell something, but you're honestly trying to help somebody. Yeah, I think, um, is this like your warm market or your cold market? I mean, kind of a little bit of both. Um, I just recently had like three friends in particular. I'm in my mid-20s, so mm -hmm. I still have some younger friends that I just – that I really consider like dream team. Like they know a lot of people, they have, you know, really, really young families and I could really just see this being something huge for them and they'll get in the conversation and then it's like all of a sudden halfway through the conversation, they just go silent and I'm like, wait a second. I thought the conversation was going so well. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, so there are people you're friends with, obviously, um, especially if you're talking to dream teamers. And, you know, for me, um, there's a couple of things. There's one, if it's um, someone that I have a relationship with, but I don't do life with. Okay, so I don't do life with them. Um, you know, maybe there's someone I really respect and admire or we're friends through like school or church or whatever. And we have contact with each other. Um, a lot of times I will just keep that conversation going by watching their Facebook page, liking their things, commenting on their stuff, um, you know, um, being interactive with them in other ways besides Plexus, right? Like you genuinely care and not like you're being a weird stalker and you like every photo and you comment on everything, but just like you would in normal life, you know, staying engaged. Um, uh, a lot of times, whatever their life is, like, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of some examples to give you, but, um, you know, let's say my friend owns a, a clothing store, you know, and I make sure that not only have I told her with, about Plexus, I've left samples with her. I've given her a catalog, like the girl knows I do Plexus, right? Um, but I shop at her store and we talk about other things that have nothing to do with Plexus. And I come into her store and I don't talk about Plexus, you know, or um, I'll comment and like her things or, you know, her daughter's, you know, starting something or whatever. And I say how cute. And I just continue to keep that conversation going and that door of relationship open and connectedness, right? So she feels connected to me in some way where one day when she changes her mind, a year from now or two years from now or three years from now, the door she's going to knock on is mine because I have kept that door of connectedness open to her. And I have continually planted those seeds, occasionally talking about Plexus all the way. If she's ever changed her mind or if, you know, she's ever still thought about it or if she brings up something about a vitamin or not feeling good or, you know, whatever. I don't take every opportunity when someone says they don't feel good to message them about Plexus. I just don't think that's genuine, right? That looks more like I'm a stalker. And I'm looking for sick people, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to be like that. But Gabrielle, I know it's hard in the younger crowd, especially because I, I think I would make sure to, I like to post towards my audience. You have to know who your audience is. So you can't post about things maybe that I would post about because our audiences are very different. So you got to know that you got to know who your audience is. You got to know who you're wanting to talk to. And I also love to send like diamond documentaries, um, especially like for you and like with the younger diamond docs and be like, I'm sorry, but every time I watch this, I think about this could be me and you and you could be my diamond doc and I could be in yours and how much fun we would have, you know, whatever. And maybe you do that, you know, every six months or something, um, you know, or you're at an event and you send her a picture and you'd be like, you should be here. I'm at this event and I so wish you were here, right? So you're just wanting to continue to keep open the authenticity and connectedness. Definitely. And at all, like, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I just, I was wondering one other thing along those lines. Do you always cold message um, and get a conversation started? Or is there ever any time where you just are like bold and you – basically go at it and throw it in the, the, the first message? Or is it always like, you know, you kind of work your way into it? It depends on the person. Okay. So there are certain people that I have messaged that I have said, okay, I am laying this out here. If you ever, ever decide that you want anything to do with Plexus products or business, like you are on my list, my dream team list. I want you so bad. I think you'd be so amazing at this business because of blah, 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 blah. So this is your official invitation to join my team. 
And if you ever change your mind about plexus, like that door is always open for you. So I've done that. Um, the other thing that I think is different now, the landscape of social media has changed rapidly over the three years that I've been a part of it. Cold messaging used to be like a really sure technique because people weren't doing it. Um, now, nowadays, everyone's messaging people, right? Like, Hey, um, you know, I get messages weekly, um, from other network marketing companies that my friends are part of where they're trying to invite me to buy their products or look at their products or whatever. So I think people are getting like kind of burnt out about it. So I think you have to get more creative. And one of the ways that I think one is more creative is inviting people to events you know, you're not like pressuring them in a cold message or anything like that, but you're saying like, Hey, we've got this awesome event going on. Would you like to be a part of it? You can be a fly on the wall. There's going to be great prizes, whatever. People don't mind being invited to things. Never put someone in a group without their permission. Like I despise that. I feel like that's someone dragging me to an event that I didn't even know about and then shoving me through the front door and saying, come sit here. I don't like that feeling. Right. So I leave every group, even if I was interested, I would would go buy it from someone else before I bought it from that person because I just feel like it's not polite. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe very much in treating people on social media the way I would treat someone in real life, and I would never drag someone anywhere without their permission. Um, so I think that's important nowadays. I think it's important that what you post on social media offers value to people in some way. You know, if you're in this business, you want to be able to add value to people, you really need to think about that. Think about what would have people coming back to your channel day after day after day. I always tell people that once you join Plexus, you're no longer just this personal page out in Facebook land posting about your kids and your life. You're now a TV channel because you're trying to attract people to your market and to your network and to your business. And so that becomes a TV channel. People don't want to watch commercials all day. So you can't post about Plexus all day long. They don't want to watch that. Um, you know, you've got to be very selective about what you post post and you've got to be authentic and you've got to make sure that your page isn't negative and that it's not, you know, discouraging people or making people like, oh, I would never want any part of that, you know, um, alienating people or things like that. You just um, have to be really smart about it. Definitely. Well, I appreciate that. I know everybody kind of has a different approach. So I was just curious, you know, if you had something that really jumped out. So and I was going to say, too, don't just stick to Facebook. Like, there's so many great social media platforms and so many ways to attract people. Like, start resource. I don't, 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 go, don't go do them all because you want to be actively engaged, right, in, in one of them so that you have followers and stuff. But, like, you know, whether that be Snapchat, where because most people your age are hanging out on Snapchat, you know, um, thinking creatively about how you can expand your network is so important. Definitely. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate your, your input and, you know, what's worked for you. That's very, very interesting. So I appreciate that. You're welcome. And I'll, and I'll add to that, um, Gabby, in that sometimes it just, like, Plexus is spreading like wildfire right now. Lives are being changed. And one of my very longest friends I've known since elementary school I talked to her about Plexus, but for whatever reason, she didn't hear me. She didn't hear me about the product. She didn't hear me about this, what, what this opportunity could be for her family. It took somebody on the East Coast for them who was, who was not even, you know, health minded to rave about these products for then her to come back to me and say, okay, I'm ready. So sometimes it's like this other third party validation and I've actually had that happen a couple times. So just like she said, be patient, keep that relationship open and give it time and you know, and lay it out there. Your dream yeah. teamers. I'm always believe in laying it out there with your dream teamers. You know what I mean? And another great um, technique that I have always found very, very successful is, um, you know, uh, Sarah Robbins uses this method. Many people use this method method is where they talk to their dream teamers and they ask their opinion. So one of the things that I really love that is helpful is I really believe that belly, belly to connection, that belly, belly 
connection is where the relationships are really bonded and where people really make decisions. And that's why Zooms are powerful. Um, if you can get people on a Zoom to do an opportunity event with them, anything like that, if you can meet them in person, that's even better. Um, the people at um, the Sweet Bay Coffee Company where I lived um, knew me by first name in that first year of my business because that is where I held every coffee chat I had with someone was in, I permanently smelled like coffee um, in my gray plexus shirt. It probably still smells like coffee um, because I worked it and I would invite people to meet me in person. And one of the things that's great for new ambassadors, I, this is my favorite new ambassador tip. Okay. This is the one that I just like, I believe it works if you do it. Okay. You're, you're anxious, you're nervous, you just started Plexus, you don't even know how to really talk about Plexus to people, um, you uh, feel anxious or anxiety about it. So here's what you would do. So like my brother, for instance, who's like so against, you know, what I'm doing or whatever, not against it, but I'm just, he's not interested, right? So I could, I could say, Hey, Dean, I just really respect and admire you as a businessman. He, he, own, he runs my father's business. He's super successful. And I just, I'm new at doing this business. I haven't presented the products and the opportunities a lot. I feel kind of nervous and anxious about it, but I just need someone to be my practice buddy, like my sounding board. Would you please meet me and just let me practice on you? I promise I won't take more than 30 minutes of your time. I will buy your coffee or I will buy your dinner or I will buy whatever, right? Whatever you want to say to that person. And you say, if you'll just give me 30 minutes so that I can practice and then you give me feedback. You tell me what I'm doing wrong, what you maybe liked about it, how I could do it differently because I so respect and admire you and I feel like you'd be a great sounding board for me. Do you know how many of your friends could not reject that message to them. You are, people love to be valued and helped, right? And they, they want to help you. And so that way they feel, they don't feel the pressure. They're not saying, Hey, you come and listen to my products and my opportunity, right? Where they feel like, Oh, bring my wallet. I've got to go buy something for my friend. You say, you leave your wallet at home. I am buying your dinner. Please come and just let me be a practice, you know, bring my practice person. Guys, you could go silver. You did that for a month and you just invited people to be, I don't care how many times you have to practice. As a diamond, I can say, I need to practice. I am so rusty. I haven't recruited somebody, whatever. And, and say, would you let me, you know, I want to, I want to try this new method or this new approach and I want to practice on you. Would you let me practice on you? Guys, you can use it forever till kingdom comes mm -hmm. and you get these relaxed, excited, happy to help you people who get to hear all about your products and your opportunity. And those seeds are planted and maybe they didn't even know it helped with gut health and they have horrible gut health or their doctor told them they needed a probiotic at their appointment last week, or they just got diagnosed with diabetes. You never know. So that is my surefire build your business today method. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Go practice on all those girls, those 20 something year old girls with young families that you would be awesome at. Put them all in the same room together. Say, so I'm thinking about doing like a plexus party and I haven't ever done one and I'm nervous. Would you guys just all come and be like supportive and let me practice on you? You can even bring the kids. They can crawl or do whatever or play and you know, I'll get us snacks and like, just let me stand up there and make a fool of myself. And then you guys tell me what I'm doing wrong. No, that's a good approach because like you said, it's, it's blowing up like crazy. So I feel like so many of my friends are also friends with this person and this person and this person and they're getting it from seven different people so then when I come to them you know I don't know if they're really hearing me or if they're just saying oh gosh okay here's another plexus message so it's, it's challenging in that sense it is and look how different you stand out you're not cold messaging them. You're not, you know, stalking them, whatever. You're saying, guys, I'm, I'm really serious about this business and you're my friends and I trust your opinions and they matter to me and I don't want to make a fool of myself and I'm going to be doing one of these events soon and I need to practice. Would you guys please come over and let me practice, you know? No, that's awesome. I, I really, really like that idea. So thanks for sharing that. I love you're that. Welcome. And then Gabby, you can come do an event for real. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Do one for real. No, seriously, I would love to. Oh, I love that. Well, Rhonda, you have given us an hour of your time and we are so, so thankful. Oh, you so many amazing 
categories of information that we've been able to cover tonight, plus your story. And I hope you all have really seen how this is possible. And this company is changing and helping so many people, obviously with the health, but also um, financially. And think about what this could be for your family in relieving that financial burden. And then also, you know, you going to promote and share health. So thank you so much for coming on. It was so great. Okay. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye.